الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مجد له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام إن من عظيم منة الله جل وعلا وكبير فضله على عباده تفكيره مواكب الخير والناظر بما يمر على المرء في يومه وليلته وفي اسبوعه وشهره بل حتى في سنته يجب أن مواسم الخيرات كثيرة ومتنوعة كما إن يأتي موسم وينقضي إلا ويأتي الذي يليه والله جل وعلا فضل بين الأيام والليالي وبين الشهور وكذلك فضل بين الخلق فالناصح لنفسه العامل على نجاحها يجد ويشتهر في تطلب مرضات الله جل وعلا وبالسعي عما يقربه الى الله جل في علاه وها نحن نحن وها نحن امه الاسلام على مقربه في شهر رمضان ذلك في الشهر قد افترض علينا ربنا جل وعلا قيام نهاره وسلم لنا وسلم لنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قيام ليله قال عليه الصلاه والسلام نعم قال ربنا جل وعلا يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون ايام معدودات فمن كان مريضا او على سفر فعده من ايام اخرى وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين ومن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له فهو خير له وان تصوموا خير لكم كنتم تعلمون ثم قال شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصح الله جل وعلا فرض علينا الصيام كما فرضه على من كان قبلنا من الامم واكرمنا ربنا جل وعلا 
بهذه الكرامة العظيمة التي اختص فيها لنفسه كما جاء في الحديث كل عمل ابن ادم له الحسنه بعشر امثالها الى سبع مئات ضعف كما قال الله عز وجل في الصيام فانه لي وانا اجري به فاعلى ايها الموفق ما اعظم هذه الحسنات وما اعظم هذه الطاعات والقربات فهنيئا لمن ادرك رمضان وهنيئا لمن قام لله حق فيه هنيئا لمن عمر نهاره وليله بما يقربه الى الله جل وعلا جاء عند احمد بن مسعد وغيره من حديث طلحه بن عبيد الله رضي الله عنه وعن الصحابه اجمعين ان رجلين من اصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اسلما في وقت واحد وكان احدهما اشد اجتهادا من الاخر في طاعه الله وفي عبادته ثم لما نادى المنادي الجهاد خرج هذا المجتهد مجاهدا في سبيل الله فمات في سبيل الله جل وعلا ثم مكث صاحبه بعده سنه ثم مات على فراشه ما كان امره كصاحبه ما كان امره كصاحبه ثم نام طلحه رضي الله عنه نومه وراى فيها انه على باب الجنه ومعه هذان الرجلان فخرج خارج من الجنه فاذن للاخر منهما في دخولها ثم مكث فترة فخرج مرة أخرى فأذن لهذا الذي مات في سبيل الله جل وعلا في دخولها ثم خرج مرة ثالثة فقال بعد أي أنه لم يحن وقته فطلحة رضي الله عنه أحد العشرة المبشرين بالجنة إلا أنه كان على قيد الحياة وكان هذا منه في نومه ومعلوم أن النوم موتة أن النوم موتة صغرى لا كبرى فلما استيقظ رضي الله عنه حدث بهذا الحديث فتسامع الناس به فجاءوا إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأخبروه الخبر متعجبين فقال لهم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مما تعجبون قالوا يا رسول الله كنا نظن أن هذا الذي مات مجاهدا في سبيل الله جل وعلا أنه يدخل الجنة قبل صاحبه. انظر كانوا يظنون أن هذا الذي مات في سبيل الله جل وعلا وكان مجتهدا في عبادة الله تبارك وتعالى أنه يدخل الجنة قبل صاحبه. فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام واسمع إلى ما قاله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ألم يمكث بعده سنة قالوا بلى يا رسول الله قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ألم يصب رمضان قالوا بلى يا رسول الله قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألم يسجد لله 
كذا وكذا قالوا بلى يا رسول الله فعندها قال نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم ان بينهما ابعد مما بين السماء والارض الله اكبر ما اعظم هذا فهنيئا لك يا من تدرك هذا الشهر هنيئا لك اذا قلت لله جل وعلا بحقه لان هناك اناس يدخل عليهم الشهر ويخرج وما قام لله بحقه وهؤلاء دعا عليهم جبريل الرسول الملك وامن على دعائه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الرسول البشر جاء في الحديث ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دخل المسجد ذات يوم واصحابه فيه فقال لهم قربوا المنبر ايقربوا من المنبر فلما ف جاء ورق جاء ورق الدرجات درجات المنبر فلما رق الدرجة الأولى قال آمين فلما رق الدرجة الثانية قال آمين فلما رق الدرجة الثالثة قال آمين ثم نزل صلوات الله وسلامه عليه فتعجب الصحابة الكرام رضوان الله عليهم من هذا الصنوع يرقى ثلاث درجات وفي كل درجة يرقاها يقول آمين فقاله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن جبريل عرض لي فقال لما رقيت الدرجة الأولى يا محمد سعود من أدرك والديه أو أحدهما ولم يدخل حجتنا قل آمين قال قلت أهدين ثم لما رأى الدرجة الثانية قال يا محمد تعود من ذكرت عنده فلم يصلي علي تعود من ذكرت عنده من ذكرت عنده فلم يصلي علي قل آمين قال قلت آمين ولما رقى الدرجة الثالثة قال يا محمد تعود من أدرك رمضان فلم يغفر له قل آمين فقلت آمين انظر إلى هذا الدعاء الذي دعا به جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام وانظر إلى هذا التأمين الذي أمنه أو الذي وانظر إلى هذا التأمين من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فما أشد خسارة من دخل عليه رمضان وخرج ولم يقتل له رمضان الذي تفتح فيه أبواب الجنان الثمانية وما منها باب إلا وفتح وتغلق فيه أبواب النيران السبعة ولا يبقى منها باب إلا وأغلق وتصفد مرضة الجان كل هذا من عظيم فضل الله جل وعلا ومن عظيم كرمه ومن عظيم رحمته وعفوه تبارك وتعالى فيا أيها الموفق شمر عن سعيد الجن وابذل الأسباب التي تعينك على أن تقوم لله جل وعلا بحقه احرص كل الحرص 
على ان تحسن في صيام النهار وعلى ان تحسن في وقت الليل وان تتقرب الى الله جل وعلا بما يثقل صحيفه حسناتك ويثقل موازينك وتنفعك باذن الله جل وعلا يوم لا يرجع مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم احرص يا رعاك الله على اقتنام مواسم الخير على اقتنام مواسم الخيرات وعلى التزود من الصالحات الباقيات فان العمر قصير والاجل قريب فالله الله في بذل الفر بما يقرب الى الله تبارك وتعالى واحرص على ان تتبع واحرص على ان تتتبع سنه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في نهاية رمضان وفي ليله حتى تكون مقتديا به مقتديا به الله جل وعلا جعله اسوة حسنة كما قال ربنا تبارك وتعالى قد جعل لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر اكتفي بهذا والله اعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم كثيرا الى Verily all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we seek His aid and His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and from the mischief of our bad deeds. Whoever Allah chooses to guide, then there is no one who can misguide Him. And whoever Allah leads astray, then there is no guidance for Him and no one who can guide Him. I testify and bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and he has no partners. And I testify, bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. And do not die except in a state of Al-Islam. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul. And who created from that soul its mate. And who made from them too many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off relationships with the wombs that bore you. And do not sever ties of kinship. For verily Allah is an ever watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say a word that is truthful, straightforward and direct. And he will direct you to righteous good deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then verily he has achieved the greatest achievement. Or he has already achieved a great achievement. As to what follows, verily, the best speech is the book of Allah, and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters, and every newly invented matter is an innovation, and every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance is in the hellfire. The Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, after opening up with what is well known as Khutbah Tahajah, our Shaykh, Shaykh Fawad Al-Amri, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he goes on and he gives salams to those who are in attendance. And then the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he went on to say that verily, from the, the great blessings that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has bestowed upon His servants and from the great bounty in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has bestowed upon His servants, is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He made for them many occasions of good. Many occasions by way in which the servant may gain good for themselves. And the one who he reflects and he contemplates uh, upon these bounties that have been bestowed upon the individual inside of his day. And inside of yani, his, uh, his week and inside of the month and the like. Then, then they will see that the occasions that a person has of good to gain good or the occasions of good. Then verily they are many. And this is a bounty indeed. So you find that there does not come, there does, there does not come an auspicious occasion of, of, of good, except that it is followed by another one after it. And Allah Jalla wa'ala, He has made certain days and certain nights auspicious, and He has given superiority and virtue to certain days and to certain nights. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He has given virtue to certain months over other months. And likewise, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He has made uh, yani, a superiority and of different ranks amongst the creation. 
So the one who is sincere to himself, then he will work diligently uh, in, inside of these occasions uh, to bring good for himself. And he will work hard. He will work hard in doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and that which Allah ta'ala is pleased with. He will work hard into trying to yeah, uh, gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will work hard and he will be diligent in doing that which will draw him near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and this is, uh, as we see, O oh, Ummah of Islam, that we are very near to the approach of the month of Ramadan. That month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made it obligatory upon us that we fast His days. And that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He has made a sunnah upon us that we stand up and we pray its nights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْرِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ that, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been written, prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who came before you, so that perhaps you attain piety. Ayyam ma'adudat, a specific set number of days. فَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ And whoever from amongst you is sick or he is upon a journey, then let him make the days up from other days. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِرْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ and upon those who don't have the ability to fast it, then it is upon them to give the fidya by feeding the poor people. وَمَن تَتَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ And whoever he increases in doing good and he excels in doing good, then verily then that, then that is good for him. وَأَن تَسُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And if you were to fast, then that is better for you if you but knew. And then after this, the shaykh he mentions, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He goes on to say, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْحُ What translated means, the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed therein. A guidance for mankind, clearly explaining the guidance and a criterion. A guidance for mankind, a clear explanation of the guidance and the criterion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made obligatory the fasting of the month of Ramadan. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has made fasting binding upon those who came before us. Allah ta'ala, He has made fasting obligatory upon us as He has made fasting obligatory upon those who came before us. So Allah ta'ala, He has, he has uh, honored us with this great honor. This tremendous honor. That tremendous honor in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made it as something that is connected to Himself, and specific to Himself. Meaning, that which has it comes in the Hadith al-Qudsi, that all of the actions of the son of Adam are for Him. And that a hasana will be rewarded by the like of His multiplication of ten, all the way up into seven hundred times. As Allah ta'ala, He said, except for... Suyam, except for the fasting, for verily it is for me, and I shall reward him for it, meaning I shall reward the slave for it. So O you who has been given the success, be given the success in, 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 in fasting and doing the righteous good deeds, then then how tremendous are these rewards and how tremendous are these actions of obedience. So glad tidings to the one who he reaches the month of Ramadan. And glad tidings to the one who he he stands and he establishes the rights of it, establishes the rights of Ramadan. And glad tidings to the one who he spends his night times and he spends his day times inside of Ramadan and doing that which it would get him close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and draw him near to Allah jalla wa ala. There comes in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad and also in other places, and it's from the hadith of Talha, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. That verily there were two men from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they became Muslim at one time. They became Muslim at the same time. But one of but one of the two, you find that he was more hardworking and he was more diligent upon obedience than the other. And then a caller he called out announcing for people to sign up for the jihad. So the one who was the harder working of the two, he signed up uh, for the jihad. And he went out fighting in the way of Allah. And then he was killed. And he died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And then his companion, he lived for after him for another year. And then and then he died upon his bed. His companion, who wasn't as hard working as him, he lived after him for another year. And then he died upon his bed. You find that his his actions or his efforts they weren't as great as his companion who had died Fisabilillah. So you find that his affair wasn't like the affair of his companion. His affair it was not like the affair of his companion. And then Talha, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he, he went to sleep and he had a dream. And inside of that dream, he was at the gates of the Jannah. He was in front of the gates of Jannah. Or in front of a gate of Jannah. And the two men, they were there, they were present. So then someone came out of the Jannah. Come, someone came from out of the Jannah. And they called upon the latter to enter into the Jannah first. Meaning, they called upon the one who had died after, from the two companions. They called upon the one who died a year later upon his bed, for him to enter into Jannah first. And then some time had went by, and someone came back out, or that some time went by, and then the one who had died, Fisa bin Ilah, he was called to enter into Jannah second. And then they came out for a third time, and then they called on to Talha to enter into the Jannah and he was one of the ten who was giving the glad tidings of entering into the Jannah because he was upon good inside of his his life and when he had yani, and this had taken place when he was still alive uh, because this was something that had he had seen inside of his dream and it is well known that the 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 dream or is well known excuse me that uh, sleep then it is the little death, and it is not the major uh, big death. Now, so when he woke up, Rabbi Allah Taala, and he started to narrate, he started to narrate uh, this hadith to the people, and that which he had saw inside of his dream, and the people they started to speak about it amongst themselves, and they went to the Prophet Sallallahu and they informed him of this narration, and they informed him of this occurrence, and it was they were amazed by it. They were amazed by this occurrence. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said to them, Why are you amazed? They said, O Messenger of Allah. They said they were amazed. They said, because O Messenger of Allah, the one who died, Fi Sabinillah, he died in jihad, died Fi Sabinillah, and he was hardworking and very righteous and, and diligent inside of his worship. We were thought that he would enter into the Jannah before his companion. And then the Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he, 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 he mentions and he says, Now listen closely to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said. He said, did his companion not live after him for a whole year? To which the companions, Radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they said, yes, oh, oh, of course, O oh Messenger of Allah, certainly. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, did he not fast a Ramadan? Meaning the one who lived for another year, did he not fast the Ramadan in that year? And they said, oh, of course, O oh Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Did he not prostrate to Allah? This and this and this? And they said, Oh, of course, O Messenger of Allah. Verily at this point, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Verily, that between them two, due to, as we understand, yani, due to the, the fasting of Ramadan that he had done, and the praying and prostrating that he had done throughout the year, after his companion had died, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Then verily, due to this, the distance between them two is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, Allahu Akbar. How awesome and how magnificent is this? He says, So glad tidings to you, the one who was able to meet this month. He said, Glad tidings to you if you're able to establish the rights of this month. If you a glad tidings to you, if you're given a success by Allah to establish the the rights of this month, he said, because verily you have those people who the month it comes to them and it goes away from them, but they did not establish the right of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So glad tidings to the one who establishes the right of Allah subhanahu wa taala, because verily there comes those individuals whom the month it comes to them and it goes away from them and they did not establish the right of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and these individuals. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he made dua against them 
And Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he was a messenger from the angels. He was an angelic messenger, or he is an angelic messenger. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ameen to this dua. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is a messenger from the human beings. As it comes in a hadith, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he entered the masjid on that day and his companions, they were sitting. And then the Prophet Sallallahu he said to them, come close to the member, Come close to the member." And then when they got close to the member, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began to go up the stairs and the steps of the member. So he stepped upon the first step and he said, Ameen. And then he stepped upon the second step and he said, Ameen. And then he stepped upon the third step and he said, Ameen. And then he came down. And, and the Sahaba, they were amazed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had done this action. They were amazed by what he had just done. That, that, that he went up on, on the three steps, and upon each step that he stepped upon, he said, Ameen. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said to them, Verily, Jibreel, he came to me, and he said, and he said that, yeah, and he said, once, up, once I stepped upon the, uh, the first step, then Jibreel alayhi salam, he said to me, O Muhammad, he said, May he be far away, the one who he encounters his parents, or he encounters one of his parents and he does not enter into Jannah uh, due to the, yani, the good treatment of them. And then the Prophet Sallallahu yeah, Alaihi Wasallam, then he said uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say Ameen. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, so then I said Ameen. And then when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stepped upon the second step, Jibreel Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam, he said, O oh, Muhammad, he said, O oh, Muhammad, may he be placed far away. The one who you are mentioned to him, and he does not say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May he be far away, the one who you are mentioned. And that person hears that mentioning, and he does not say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May he be far the one who you are mentioned with him, and he does not send the Salawat Wasallams upon you. And then he said to him, Say, Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam, he said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Say, Ameen. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, so then I said, Ameen. He said, and then once I had stepped upon the third step, Jibreel ﷺ, he said, O Muhammad, may he be placed far away, the one who Ramadan, it comes to him, and he is not forgiven. So say, Ameen. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, so I said, Ameen. The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, look at this. Look at this dua, that... Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he made dua with, look at this dua that Jibreel made. And then look at this ameen and the saying of ameen from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Shaykh, he says, so how, so how great is the loss and how unfortunate is the calamity and how tremendous is the calamity and the loss and the loss of the one who Ramadan, it comes to him and then it goes away and he is not forgiven. The Ramadan that the doors of the, the Jannah, they're open therein. The eight doors, the eight gates of the Jannah, it is opened. And there is not a single door from amongst them except that is opened. And the Ramadan therein, that the gates of the hellfire, they are closed. The seven gates of the hellfire are closed. And there is not a single door from them except that it is closed. And the Ramadan, wherein the shayateen, they are imprisoned. All of this, it is from the tremendous bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the tremendous generosity and, uh, from, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the tremendous mercy and the tremendous pardoning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, O oh, you who has been given the success in doing that which Allah loves and that which Allah is pleased with. He said, hasten to doing those things and hasten to the causes of that which will aid you in, in obeying Allah and the obedience and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, so strive hard with the all, yani with the, with the utmost and epitome of striving to fast its days and to excel in standing in the night prayer and to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strive hard 
in doing that which will increase your good deeds and make your scale of good deeds heavy. Strive hard in doing those things which will benefit you when you meet your Lord, Jalla wa'ana. That day in which money and children will not avail a person nor have any benefit for him. Only the one who comes to Allah with a pure heart will find availment in that which will benefit him. So work hard, O servant of Allah, to take full advantage of these auspicious occasions of good and to increase in doing the righteousness and righteous good deeds and actions of obedience. Because verily your lifespan, it is short. And verily the time of your death and your appointed term, it's close. So Allah, Allah, so Allah, Allah, by Allah, by Allah, work hard and doing those things which will draw you near to Allah. And be diligent and work hard and tenaciously follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the days of Ramadan and in the nights of Ramadan, strive to do those things that are in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that you will be of one who is imitating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He made the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the most excellent example. As Allah Jalla Wa Ala, He says what means that verily the Messenger of Allah is the most excellent of example for the one who He's looking forward to Allah and the last day, for the one who wants and desires Allah in the last day. The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, He says that we will suffice ourselves with that which has been mentioned. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.